of age when you know dinosaurs dinosaurs start started to you know really pop pop out on my radar yeah i guess that's the word <laughs> i was looking for obsessed somebody called the exorcist i like dinosaurs <laughs> And then he turns his head 180 degrees and spill his bowels under the priest. So, uh, when did it happen for you guys? I mean, I remember uh, I was like, uh, Jurassic Park was definitely the you know turning point in, I guess, in my life. I could I could say easily. So you know what's what is the uh, point in your lives when you guys you know got sort of hooked on you know dinosaurs and you know started like you know. Spending more time uh, thinking and I don't know, reading and drawing and painting and sculpting and doing dinosaur related stuff. <laughs> then Jurassic Park came in and finished the job yep that's pretty much my story as well yeah I guess if we would like uh, try and uh, uh, like uh maybe explain it by uh, comparing uh, how invested we became in, with, with like dinosaurs by uh, comparing it to you know uh, how deep uh, into the water you like stepped in like before Jurassic Park I was like maybe before Jurassic Park I was like maybe ankle deep in dinosaurs and then you know Jurassic Park came and I was like like I sank and you know I just drowned and I was dead <laughs> oh that's funny <laughs> oh goodness! Yeah, what our what our moms had to put through, uh, you know, for our love of you know ancient history. <laughs> yeah, literally, because I wanted to say like I was, uh, I had like I guess I was like maybe. 15 years of age, 16 years of age, something like that. And I uh, started building a Tyrannosaurus Rex uh, skeleton from like some type of so soft wood. I had a couple of pieces of this wood and it was like, you know, pretty cool for sculpting. And uh, so I started sculpting these, you know, bits and pieces, you know, to put together a skeleton. 
so you know I had I didn't have like literally any schematics any drawing anything I had this encyclopedia and uh, there was like a skeleton drawing and uh, uh, you know I I used that as reference and I remember uh, I think I was uh, like working on a femur bone and uh, and yeah the, the size of the skeleton was like if I made if I managed to complete it it would be like maybe maybe a meter or a little bit less than a meter uh, long skeleton and uh, <laughs> yeah yeah I remember that is the man and uh, I loved the, the, the parts where he annoyed uh, uh, Walter Matthau, uh, the, the late actor. Yeah, and uh, what I was saying, uh, I was working on a femur, I think, and uh, since I didn't have like proper tools, you know, to uh, work with wood, I used without, you know, I used with, like, I used what I've got and uh, s up to that point it was going good but uh, I was working on that femur and uh, I was like you know uh, trying to get this uh, you know uh, to get to the femur shape as close as possible you know and doing this rough rough uh, like cutting with uh, an axe and uh, yeah I remember just like you know almost chopping off my index finger of my um, left hand and uh, yeah I went uh, like my mother you know she was like panicking because there was like a lot of blood <laughs> and uh, I remember uh, I went you know to the hospital there they I had some stitches and stuff like that and I couldn't use this hand like for you know two weeks or more uh, because it was all swollen up and the stitching and everything and, uh, and uh, since that accident I sort of you know stopped uh, did not finish it unfortunately but uh, yeah dinosaurs death by dinosaurs literally <laughs> definitely yeah, and that that uh, that adventure of you know going into the mountains and woods to uh, into these uh, excavation points for the gravel where they found that extinct mammal that almost ended up like you know badly because you know we dehydrated dehydrated pretty badly and uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the the story of how I first saw Jurassic Park was sort of funny as well. Um, basically, uh, the movie uh, was in theaters, and uh, there were like you know tra Jurassic Park trailers, uh, you know, on the TV for you know all the time, like the entire day. The the trailers were like rolling, and uh, and I wanted to see the movie, and. Uh, uh, I was like, uh, what age was that? Like 13 years of age, and uh, uh, basically my parents didn't have like a lot of money. We kind of struggled at that point a little bit, and um, and uh, basically I couldn't get the money to you know buy 
bus ticket to see the movie and to go to town to buy a bus ticket to buy a you know theater ticket and uh i remember it was literally the last day of uh, showing Jurassic Park it was pouring like crazy the rain the storm and uh like uh i i kind of uh, gotten my parents to you know give me money to go and uh get a haircut or something like yeah yeah the, the haircut definitely the haircut and uh and yeah i remember spending that money to you know go and see a movie and uh i remember sitting in a in a theater i was like uh, you know uh, wet my pants were wet like you know uh, up to my knees because of, of all the you know rain and wind and stuff and uh i remember even being a little bit cold and uh you know then the movie began and uh up to the point where they're like uh driving these jeeps towards brachiosaurus um and you know the anticipation scene where you know uh, they spot the brachiosaur and you know sam nail is you know uh, getting up from his seat and turning turning the you know uh, laura dern's head towards the brachiosaurus i remember at that point like i was uh, i was literally like you know uh, ecstatic and uh, you know when the brachiosaurus uh, soared on the screen and this music beautiful music by john williams Uh, yeah, 4D definitely. <laughs> uh, it took me a couple seconds to realize what's going. On, like, what, what, what 4D is he talking about? What the hell is wrong with this guy? <laughs> and uh, then I realized, yeah, yeah, funny. Literally. Uh, yeah, Jurassic Park. That's like you know, experience like no other. But I guess uh, you know when, uh, in a little more time, when you know all these uh, computer graphics uh, advance a little bit more, and uh, you know the processing powers, the uh, graphic cards, and uh, and all these uh, virtual uh, headsets, and uh, you know uh, pending uh, uh, game-changing you know uh, things that are bound to happen in you know gaming industry. I believe we're we're going to you know uh, be able to experience uh, you know all these feelings and emotions uh, maybe even at a, at a higher higher level level uh, than uh, compared to you know when we were like kids uh, because you know of, uh, because of the abili ability of this technology this virtual technology and stuff uh, to you know take you in, emerge you into the experience uh, on a whole another level, you know. So I'm really uh, looking forward to, you know, evolution of, uh, of uh, that technology. And I hope we see it like relatively soon, you know, you, where you'd be able to, you know, put on this gear and, you know, basically walk around, you know, uh, Cretaceous forests or Jurassic forests and, you know, uh, look at these creatures, you know, built uh, to be like realistic and uh, realistic environments and uh, animations and movements and stuff like that. That will be mind-blowing i think
Yes, I've seen uh, what these guys are cooking as well uh, regarding the uh, virtual reality and uh, that will be that will be pretty crazy as well and uh, yeah this is all all of these those things are like uh, being produced right now and uh, you know uh, so when the oculus rift and you know all these others uh, other manufacturers uh, publish their own like you know virtual reality headsets so you know uh, some of these companies are like uh, game studios and you know uh, they're like you know, going to jump on the on this market you know to also take advantage of you know the fact that you know this is this will be like you know relatively new and uh, untapped area where you know The ones who do it right and who do it first are, you know, going to make a lot of money uh, with it. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that uh, virtual reality uh, era of video gaming and uh, uh, that's gonna be fantastic I think I hope you know imagine you know standing on that uh, omnidirectional like uh, platform where you can you know move freely in any direction you want uh, strapped to that uh, uh, harness and uh, like you've got some you know uh, controllers in your hand and uh, you got this you know virtual headset and you're like in this forest and all these sounds these birds and, you know and the noise from the forest and the wind and the branches and whatever and, you know large sequoia trees and ferns and you know like you know prehistoric forest uh, jungle uh, and uh, just imagine, you know, moving, uh, and you're walking, you're, you know, in your virtual reality, you're walking, you're moving around as well, as physically, and, uh, you know, imagine that beautiful computer graphic, you know, that, you know, is, you know, going to be a reality. I mean, if you look uh, at some of the titles that are being made right now, they have, like, pretty amazing graphics so you know imagine what we'll have like you know in a couple more years like you know five or six years from today it's going to be even more beautiful even more realistic so you know these experiences are going to be pretty crazy I think 
I mean, I'm joking with my friend, but I think that's also going to happen to some of the people that, you know, because the level of immersion is going to be so high that uh, the the lines between, you know, virtual reality and, you know, physical uh, reality are going to be, you know, blurred even further. So I think, you know, some people will probably, you know, suffer from PTSD or uh, whatever other, you know, uh, uh, stress-related or whatever, you know, conditions, uh, s like f f s mental conditions, you know, you can, you know, uh, suffer from uh, when being exposed to high levels of stress or things like that. Like, you know, people are going to play horror video games and, you know, war games, like, you know, first-person shooters and stuff like that, and, you know, it's literally going to be, for some people probably, you know, like, you know, they were really, you know, on a battlefield and, uh, like, you know, have all these, like, issues <laughs> from, you know, playing video games, waking up, you know, at night, screaming, We got to get to the chopper. Come on, do it. Bosh it. <laughs> I had to do it, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. It's all right, honey. It's all right. You're just uh, dreaming. A bad dream. It's all right, honey. Go back to sleep. Shush now. Shush.
I'm not going to do the feathers in ZBrush. I'm going to do it inside 3ds Max. 3ds Max. Um, I tried before on a couple occasions exporting, uh, you know, the mesh, the fiber mesh that I created uh, inside ZBrush, but I couldn't get it to, you know, uh, work for me inside 3ds Max. And uh, in, inside 3ds Max I'm using uh, this uh, plugin, Hair Farm. And it's pretty cool, it's pretty great plugin. It's really uh, a lot better than native uh, 3ds Max uh, you know, hair and fur system. And um, I hope I'll be able to you know, get uh, some pretty cool results with uh, 3ds Max, Max with regards to building feather, fuzzy like you know, integument for Dino carries. Yeah, 3ds Max is uh, 3ds Max is pretty. Uh, I mean, it's pretty cool software for uh, you know uh, the best probably software for me. Uh, as at, at some points, I regret not you know uh, learning Maya um, because basically, like 3ds Max and Maya are sort of like you know. On the top of the food chain, uh, when it you know comes to uh, these type of uh, applications, and uh, well, that's the way I see it. You know, uh, maybe light wave users or uh, XSI uh, users or I don't know Blender users or whatever other users they wouldn't agree. Maybe, but I think uh, you know that's the way it is. Um, but yeah, 3ds Max is you know hard to replace when it comes to rendering and you know uh, animation and stuff like that. Yeah, Maya uh, supposedly is perfect choice for um, character artists and you know basically the things that we do Maya supposedly you know should be better but it's just I don't know I took the 3ds Max direction and uh, I try to uh, uh, like you know learn Maya as well a couple times but just never uh, pushed through, you know, uh, the phase where, you know, I sort of got stuck on some, you know, uh, some aspects of Maya and uh, just 
sort of quit over time. It was a little bit annoying because uh, you know basically everything was uh, pretty much different than in 3ds max max so even some of the you know same like same actions same features same basically same results but they you know decided to give it different names and uh, this just you know added up to the confusion that I experienced when you know I was trying to learn Maya and I just didn't felt like you know learning uh, these uh, you know new names for things for the same things you know that I was like doing in 3ds max so
I just read the message. Um, my favorite dinosaur would probably be Carnotaurus Sastrate. Um, I ju I'm just fascinated with this uh, dinosaur and uh, I just I cannot put my finger on it it's just pretty amazing uh, animal and it just you know looks cool looks uh, I just love the way it looks I mean, yeah, it's really, if you, uh, you know, if, if, I'd s if I'd stop and think about it, you know, a little bit harder, um, uh, it's hard to tell, you know, if you were, like, given a chance to, uh, okay, so say, uh, a you know, name a dinosaur and we'll, you know, give you a chance to see it uh, for real, like, you know, I'll you know, we'll send you in uh, back in time and you'll be able to see this animal. It would be a hard pick, you know. <laughs> so I'm not sure what I would, like, pick in that if I had, like, a chance to, you know, travel back in time and see, see it, like, you know, as it was, like, you know, really, you know, a live animal. <coughs> So, yeah, I'm not sure whether I would pick like Carnotaurus or some other dinosaur. I just don't know. Oh, no, sure, no problem. You can link anything that you'd like. Just don't link porn. <laughs> Well, this one is unusual. <coughs> and 
ichthyovenator, venator, whatever it's pronounced. Ichthyovenator. Yeah, most of the theropod dinosaurs are pretty badass. Oh yeah, I like this one as well. Hyangosaurus. Oh, this is something new for me. I wasn't aware of this dinosaur. The, the last one, the Gigantospinosaurus. Uh, if that's uh, a real dinosaur. Or
Augustinia is, uh, yeah, I know about this one. When you look uh, at all this uh, diversity in these species, and uh, I'm not sure where, where uh, but uh, I read some, like, uh, uh, like a JPEG, uh, informative JPEG with uh, some sort of uh, chart where like uh, it uh, sort of illustrates how many dinosaurs uh, we've discovered up to this point and uh, based on some uh, calculations uh, and you know uh, and uh, uh, like st statistics or whatever like uh, the possible diversity of life uh, back in you know uh, Jurassic, Cretaceous, tr Triassic, and you know all these uh, eras. Um, <clears throat> so you know how much, how many more dinosaurs are yet to be discovered? Like you know we haven't discovered like I don't know, ten or fifteen percent of you know life based on that chart. I'm not sure, don't take me for, uh, you know, don't take my word, uh, like, uh, uh, take a bit, a little bit of, you know, like, with little, rain, like, I'm sorry, I'm tired, I'm starting to float. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the percentage that I mentioned, but, you know, it's really like, it's like, you know, Pretty, sh pretty shocking, like uh, according to that, if that's true, and it probably is close to truth or something. You know, how much more dinosaur species are there that you know we still need to discover, and uh, how many species were they that you know we'll maybe never discover? So, really, you know something to scratch your head about, definitely. And this is also something that I was thinking about. There's this one other thing that I was, that I, uh, you know, thought about, like, uh, it would be so cool if, like, uh, we could somehow know where to dig, and uh, it would be cool to know, or at least to know, like, not know where to dig, but maybe know, just, like, you know, have a factual uh, information that, you know, there is, like, I don't know six or fifteen uh, incredibly well-preserved Tyrannosaurus Rex, you know, uh, fossils uh, that, you know, are lying somewhere beneath the, you know, stone and ground and earth. And uh, it would be pretty exciting to, you know, at least know that you know it's out there and it need it needs to be found. Like you know, uh, maybe have a Tyrannosaurus Rex with uh, extremely well uh, preserved bones and you know extremely well preserved uh, imprints of you know skin and skin impressions and whatnot. That would be that would be mind bending. You know, just to some new like you know uh, fossil uh, like uh, 
traces and evidence that you know will shed more light on how some of these animals lived and uh, looked and you know things like that. Yeah, hadrosaurid dinosaurs look, they're, they sort of look like horses, of, you know. Uh, um, past times. Hadrosaurids, they, I think they lived, uh, they lived during the uh, Cretaceous period, if I'm not wrong. Because they were coexisting with Tyrannosaurus rex, so. Yeah, Parasaurolophus has uh, that huge crest. Pachycephalosaurus has pretty, pretty uh, like interesting head. So I'm not sure what happened to the theory about. Our, uh, pachycephalosaur did it uh, use its uh, like uh, thick skull for head budding or uh, or you know or was that even possible at all Oh, this one is cool, yep. The uh, Lasutu Ceratops. Yeah, that's a valid question. I wouldn't say that I'm not interested, it's just I'm more like disproportionately more interested in dinosaurs, if that's, if that's a valid answer. Um, because you know, there are like some pretty cool and pretty like interesting, you know, uh, extinct mammals like, you know, uh, uh, saber tooth uh, cats and uh, uh, mammoth and uh, the mega therium, I think. The large mammal that resembles the rhinoceros. Um, so, yeah, th the extinct mammal uh, lineage has quite a bit of, you know, animals to offer that are, you know, uh, 
were pretty spectacular, you know. I guess this is uh, where I guess this is also where the uh, point from Jurassic World comes in. Uh, it might be lame, but it's just like for me, it's like that. Like uh, dinosaurs are sort of bigger, scarier. They have bigger te teeth, uh, more teeth. So you know, maybe that's just you know that. But Draws draws me to them more than you know, some extinct uh, mammals. Pretty cool looking uh, animal right there. Now I have to Google, I'm not sure what. Oh, no, no, no. The, the megatherium is, uh, yeah, it looks like a sloth, like a giant sloth, and I'm not sure which. Uh, So I'm trying to Google this fascinating animal. Yeah, this one, this is the the one that I had in my mind when I was talking about extinct mammals. Hold on, I'm I'm gonna share. Uh, I'm gonna share the uh, link. Just a sec. Basically, it was uh, a yeah, yeah. That's it. Paraceth uh, Paraceratherium. <laughs> this is the link for the yeah, yeah. <laughs> Paraceth Para 
Cerotherium against uh, Spinosaurus. Who would win? Probably. <laughs> Fatality. Get over here. Velociraptor cages are open! They're the most dangerous dinosaurs of all. They attack in coordinated formations. My god, where did they learn that? <laughs> eh, a five! I see, I've seen this. Uh, Dark Cyan, you were asking me or DVZ TV knew about the uh, DeviantArt. Uh, I do have a DeviantArt page. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 30 seconds delay. 30 seconds delay.
had the, the black and white uh, styracosaur stylish
right so I just saw your uh, message uh, the uh, the function that I'm using right now that you're asking about is HD selection this is it, it's located here so basically uh, you have your mesh subdivided like uh, to a maximum subdivision that your computer can handle um, you know working on the entire model like sort of I don't know my computer handles well everything up to 20 million polygons everything above starts to keep them slow you know uh, starts to slow them down and uh, it just you know it just isn't uh, uh, easy to work uh, you know when you're and your ZBrush is unresponsive and your computer is unresponsive so and then uh, that's when uh, HD geometry comes in uh, divide HD <laughs> basically what you do is you divide your model but uh, you get to work only at sections you know that your computer can handle at a time so basically you can uh, so let's for instance, I'm going to exit. Uh, I'm going to exit this HD uh, feature, and uh, I'm doing this by pressing uh, A key on my keyboard. So you can press your A. Uh, you have to overlay your mouse over the area that's in HD, otherwise nothing will happen. 